I have a real issue with social media. It trends some of the most outrageous therapeutic techniques from all over the world, glorifying the no pain, no gain mentality. But let's be clear, there is a very fine line between treatment and torture. As therapists, our job is to predominantly help patients move and feel better while structuring long-term rehabilitation plans that build strength and resilience. We're not here to smash structures back into place or chase clickbait trends that appeal to faceless strangers on social media. Now, I'll be honest, I don't like the Y-strap manipulation, right? It's a personal thing. I don't like it. But I wanted to give it a fair understanding. So I spoke to the manufacturers of it. We reviewed the research and examined the clinical integration and the safety of it. So what does the research that we've just published show? And here's the question that we need to ask ourselves. Just because something is popular does not mean that it is safe and effective. We also have to ask ourselves, would I let someone do this technique to my loved ones, my wife, my husband, a parent, or even my child, right? If the answer is no, then we shouldn't be doing it to other people. So let's start with a simple truth. Popularity does not equal validity. Social media thrives on spectacle, the visual, the dramatic and the sensational. The Y-strap with its dramatic, massive pulls and clicks and pops fits perfectly into this mould. But popularity does not mean safe and effective care. It was popular in the Victorian era to blow tobacco smoke up a copper pipe and into a patient's bum to cure everything from back pain to other MSK issues. And that was very, very popular. Popular doesn't mean effective or clinically valid. As clinicians, our responsibility is not to entertain. It's to provide patient-centred care. That means no theatrics, no quick fixes, just evidence-based interventions, critical thinking, and above all, patient safety. So let's break this down. The Y-strap is marketed as a tool for spinal decompression, claiming to reduce spinal stress and improve function. But some practitioners has adopted it for high velocity, high amplitude or HVHA manipulations. Now, this is where the problem lies. The manufacturers explicitly warn against this use. So in an email to me that we used within the research, the manufacturers stated that the Y-strap is not to be used for spinal manipulation at all. And it's outside of our control what therapists do with it, which to me raises immediate red flags with the company disassociating itself with therapists that are using that technique for manipulation. Now, traditional high velocity, low amplitude techniques, they are rooted in control, controlled amplitude, short distance, using vectors and minimal force. This control reduces stress on surrounding structures and it requires a deep understanding of anatomy and biomechanics. But yanking the neck with rapid forceful traction without specificity or measurable force parameters is like tossing a coin or frankly a gamble. So let's talk about the the risks. The spine is a complex structure housing the spinal cord, nerves and very vital blood vessels. Now, aggressive traction, especially in the cervical spine, can lead to serious complications significant things like vertebral artery dissections, nerve damage, or even the exacerbation of pre-existing conditions like disc herniations or spinal cord compressions. Now, MRI studies have shown that many asymptomatic individuals have underlying spinal pathologies. Applying high velocity, high amplitude forces to unsuspecting spine could turn a silent condition into a painful or even dangerous one. Well, this is why case history, assessments, clinical frameworks and shared decision making are so critical for the therapeutic process. But 
that aspect doesn't get likes or views, does it? Now, I'm not here to completely dismiss the Y strap entirely, all right? So things like traction and decompression techniques have their place in manual therapy and research does support their use for conditions like cervical radiculopathy or lumbar disc herniations, particularly when applied, hear this, in a slow and controlled manner. But the key word here is controlled. The Y strap, as it is often portrayed on social media, is anything but. It's a one size fits all approach in a field that demands individual care. And let's be honest, the idea of a single technique solving all problems is a myth. This isn't Lord of the Rings, where one technique rules them all. This sort of, as we say, mono-interventionalism is narrow-minded, it's reductionist, and it is outdated. It ignores the complexity of the human body and the unique needs of each individual patient. And so this brings me on to my next point, specificity. As clinicians, we pride ourselves on being able to assess, diagnose and treat with precision. We don't just treat spines, we treat people. And each patient comes with a unique history, a unique presentation and a set of needs. Applying a blanket technique like a Y-strap without regard for those individual factors undermines the very principles of evidence-based practice. There's no individuality there. Yeah, yank and you're done. So let's consider the risk versus the reward. What are the alternative options? Well, think, can we use safer, well-established techniques that already exist? Well, yes. Cervical and lumbar traction, when applied correctly, can provide relief without the risk associated with high-velocity manipulations. Things like mobilizations and soft tissue works, even things like speeder board and drop table adjustments offer controlled low force alternatives. And then let's not forget the, the power of patient education, exercise and rehabilitation above all. They are the cornerstones of long term recovery, not the Y strap. So the bottom line is this. We must prioritize patient safety over spectacle. Social media may reward flashy techniques, but our duty as healthcare professionals is to do no harm. So before adopting any tool or technique, we really must ask ourselves, is this supported by any research? Is it safe? Could I achieve the same outcome in a safer way? And is it truly in the best interests of my patients to do this technique? And let's take a moment to reflect on the research. So we looked a lot at the research out there. And these are sort of the five key points from our recent study that you can access online now for free. The problem is there really is just a lack of evidence for the use of the Y-strap. It's not designed or recommended for manipulation. Yet many, many practitioners are using it in this way despite there being a significant lack of any supporting evidence or supporting its safety or efficacy in the context of a high velocity thrust. The y strap, when used aggressively, applies a high velocity, high amplitude force to the spine. Now, this is a significant deviation from traditional HVT techniques that have been heavily researched. These are low amplitude and controlled movements, and such massive force can overstretch spinal structures, leading to potential injuries. And the third thing as well is it's just not specific in any way, shape or form. The Y strap is a non-specific tool, meaning it doesn't target any individual areas of restriction. And this lack of specificity increases the risk of applying inappropriate force to areas that may already be compromised, such as degenerated disc or unstable joints. There's a potential for nerve and vascular injury. The cervical spine in particular is vulnerable to injury during aggressive traction. The vertebral arteries, the nerves and other critical structures are at risk of damage which could lead to potentially serious complications. 
And let's not forget the manufacturer's warnings. These are being ignored. The creators of the wise trap in the emails we've got explicitly state it should not be used for manipulation. Yet many practitioners are disregarding these warnings and are prioritizing dramatic results over patient safety. I think the Y strap serves as a reminder of the importance of critical thinking in our field. Let's not be swayed by trends or viral videos. Let's not follow the crowd simply because it's the easy path. Instead, let's commit the ev- commit to evidence-based practice. The, to continuous learning and above all to the well-being of those who trust us with their care. Look, because at the end of the day, our patients deserve nothing less than excellent therapeutic treatment. So just because it's popular doesn't mean it's valid. I'm sorry about the epic long rant for this video, but we spent a lot of time researching this topic. We wanted to give it a fair hearing. I'm not against it for gentle cervical decompression. But when I see patients using it, or sorry, therapists using it and dragging their patients across the table with this dramatic, forceful Y-axis thrust, I just think we can do better.